guys, I'm Siobhan, a fifth year medical resident, and today I'll be shadowing an orthotist. And this is really exciting. We'll be behind the scenes finding out how they design and create all sorts of different orthotics and braces. Here she is. Hey, Wendy. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, welcome to the prosthetics and orthotics department. Wendy is an orthotic resident just weeks away from writing her certification exam, which covers everything from foot orthotics to scoliosis braces and even corrective helmets for babies. This morning, she's working with Dr. Lin, a physiatrist who has a special interest in orthotics and prosthetics. So I have a 70-year-old woman who's having a lot of midfoot pain on the left. Mm. I really want to get her an AFO with a medial T-strap, pull her back up into neutral alignment. An ankle foot orthosis is a brace that helps control ankle movement and provides stability, something this patient desperately needs to help manage her severe foot pain. Okay, so we think she's a really good candidate for a new AFO. I'm just gonna go get my tools that we use for casting and then go ahead and cast her. I've got a pretty small casting kit. This is literally it, all I need for my, <laughs> my uh, bench. Everything else that I need is in the casting room, so we're gonna head there now. Yeah, so that is so funny. Yeah. I thought that was a pencil case. Yeah, I mean, it is a pencil case, but it's got more stuff in it. All the goodies. All, of, all the stuff I need. All right. Uh, when I come into the room, I just get ready to cast. So what I do is I put down some towels to keep the floor clean and myself clean. So this will go uh, on her skin. And then I use my indelible pencil with some water um, and it makes a really nice bright purple mark. So I can use that to mark any bony prominences, anything I need to remember when I'm modifying her cast. And now we're all set up. I'm gonna go get her and we'll go take a cast. Wow, it looks fantastic. Look cool. at that, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so like I was saying, the inside we've got the stockinette, but outside is the scotch cast. We got a really good shape capture. Um, and I'm just gonna take this into our modifying room where it's going to get filled with plaster. And oh. then I'm gonna modify it. Fantastic. Now, I gotta say, why is it green? Well, we do have a lot of different colors of scotch cast. I always tell patients, this one's just for me to keep. They don't get to keep this, so you just choose whatever color is handy. Um, but sometimes you have other colors available, and uh, if a kid really is like, I need red, <laughs> I will find red scotch cast and we can cast you in that color. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like the turnaround time for one of these ankle foot orthoses is about three weeks, but it really depends how many projects are going on in the workshop at one time. We're going to show you different orthoses at different stages of development so you can get a sense of the whole process. The cast Wendy made of the patient's foot and ankle is called a negative cast. Orthotic technicians like Emma will first seal the cast, set it up in the sandbox to prevent it from tipping over, and then fill it with plaster to create a positive cast, which is basically a model of the patient's leg. Then, Wendy will modify the cast based on her clinical assessment with the patient. Uh, you can see on it how we've got some areas of really bony prominences. So those are the spots that I marked with that indelible pencil, or I know she might need a little bit of extra space that we're trying to support with the AFO. So she walks sort of on the medial border of her foot. There's a lot of pressure here and a lot of callus. So we wanna keep her up and out of that position uh, so that that callus can dissipate. And here's the finished model, which clearly outlines where the patient needs extra support and a built-in strap to pull her foot into a more normal position. Now the orthotic technicians take over to actually create the product. This is where things really heat up. These ankle foot orthoses are molded from thermoplastic and patients get to choose the color and pattern they want, even adding a superhero. First, the plastic is heated in the oven until it becomes translucent. Then the design is added. Before the plastic is carefully molded over the cast, using a vacuum to suck the plastic tight against the plaster. And if little air bubbles form when the reinforced material is added, a needle and syringe is used to suck them out. Once the plastic cools and hardens, it's cut and removed from the plastic model. And then the finishing touches are added, like adding cork to the bottom using concrete glue and riveting straps in place. And there you've got it, the finished product, ready for a fitting with the patient.
All right, so now that you've seen what an AFO is like by itself, we're moving on to something a bit bigger. It's called an HKAFO or a hip, knee, ankle, foot orthosis. Wow. Okay. Yes. So that's something where someone needs a pair of AFOs because they have weakness around the ankles. They also have some weakness around the hips. So their feet tend to turn inwards because of weakness there. So having uh, some joints that are attached can help to externally rotate them so they're less likely to trip that way as well. This patient was born with spina bifida. This is a condition that occurs early in pregnancy when the backbone doesn't form properly, which often results in damage to the spinal cord and nerves. In the case of this boy, he's been wearing leg braces for years, but he's grown out of the last pair, so now the team is making him a replacement. First, the ankle foot orthosis is made. You'll notice this plaster cast looks different than the last one, and that's because this will be an articulated AFO, which means there'll be a hinge that allows the patient to bend their ankle when they're walking. Next, Matt creates the ankle joint by cutting and shaping the plastic. Now over to Alex, who's working on the hip and knee parts of the brace. As you can see here, measurements were taken of the boy's legs and the pieces have been made to fit. So this is our, our pelvic band, which will go around his waist. Our Upper hip joint will attach here with two steel rivets. will attach to a free motion hip joint. So this will allow him to, the device on, he can sit. So we will have his hips at 90 and his knees at 90. Now it's off to the sandblaster to make the metal nice and smooth. And finally, color is added to the metal using static electricity, which is so cool. The colored powder is sprayed through an electrostatic gun, which negatively charges the powder. The metal that's being colored is grounded, which attracts the powder to the metal. Then the metal is heated, which melts the powder, forming a hard coating. And voila! Wow! <laughs> the last step is sewing straps and adding padding to make the pelvic band more comfortable. Then it gets assembled to create this functional HKAFO masterpiece. Okay, so this is like the, the concept in medicine, right? You see one, do one, teach one. So now I've seen two and I'm gonna do one. <laughs> wow. Moment of truth. Don't grab it like this, you grab it. Oh, here's your AFO you molded. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Came out well, eh? Look at that. All right, on to something completely different. Cranial molding orthoses, or helmets that are designed to correct the shape of a baby's head. So back in the day, there was a lot of incidents of SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome, which is super terrible to think about. But then in the 90s, they started a back to sleep program where they got kids to sleep on their backs when they went to sleep and it almost eliminated the incidence of SIDS. But now that babies are in a lot of these sleep sacks, really great car seats, good strollers, um, if they've got bigger heads or they're really just sound sleepers, they tend to get these flat spots just from being in one position for a lot of the time. If it gets too flat and they can't roll out of it, we often put a helmet on it to try and get it to be rounder. So one of the steps is to take a scan of the patient in order to create the 3D model to rectify online into our final helmet shape. So we use our scanning technology to take um, many pictures of the patient and it puts it together on the screen here where you can see it should be picking up my frames. So we use the start scan to make the helmet as well as we can use that to compare it to our end result. So you can see this head here is the same one I just showed you with the flattening at the back of the head here. And this is them about four or five months later. You can see the head is now much more oval. They have much more space at the back. And then if we look at them from the side, they now have much more of that purchase underneath the back of their head and they can now wear silly party hats without them falling off. 
that is such an amazing result. Like that, that's incredible. How long does the baby have to wear uh, the helmet like this? So during the day, we say it's about a 23 hour wear helmet. So the wow. babies are growing all the time. So to make sure they're growing into the space that we want them to and the long spots aren't getting any longer, we say it's on all night, off in the morning for cleaning, might come off a couple of times during the day just to get wiped out. Yeah. Off again for bath time for cleaning and then back on. So wow. all the time. So big commitment. Yeah. An uh, average about four months that they're in the helmet. Four for months. Production. Okay. So next guys, I'm actually the patient and I'm so grateful that you've like fit me in today to talk about my feet. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure. I'm not in pain regularly, um, but my family and I really like to do these long distance hikes. Like, before COVID, like going for like two to three weeks at a time with our big packs on our backs. And when I was doing that, I started noticing like the inside of my ankle would become painful. Like I want to get on top of this now so I don't have issues or problems with my joints down the road. So I want to be kind of preventative in that way. Wendy carefully assesses my feet while I'm standing and walking before having me lie on my stomach to examine my ankle foot alignment. Okay, give it to me straight. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too wild, um, but I do think that based on all of the assessment that we did today, you are an overpronator, and I think that you would benefit from a pair of custom foot orthotics. Being an overpronator means that my foot rolls inwards more than it should, which increases the risk of getting plantar fasciitis, shin splints, or joint pains if it goes untreated. So I'm going to get casted for orthotics to prevent those things from happening. You'll notice Wendy does this while I'm lying down because it keeps my feet in a neutral position, allowing her to create an orthotic that best supports my arches. Um, the next steps are uh, we're going to head up to finance and then um, basically we're going to see you in about two weeks. Okay. Um, and on that day where they're, we're doing the fitting, we're going to make sure that you bring a pair of shoes that's big enough to accommodate the orthotics. So you're saying that you're in the market for a new pair of shoes, make yes. sure that they're, yes, make sure they're <laughs> at least like a half size bigger than you would normally go. I've seen some really large models like this one around yes. the workshop and I'm dying. I'm so curious. You gotta <laughs> tell me what this is all about. <laughs> all right. So that's a model that we use for somebody who has scoliosis. Scoliosis is a condition where the spine curves to the side and it affects about 3% of the population. It usually presents in kids or teenagers. And most of the time, we don't know why it happens. Mild scoliosis doesn't usually cause problems for the person, but as the curve gets bigger, it can cause pain, limit mobility, and it can even compress the lungs in severe cases. These are the cases that require treatment with back braces and sometimes even surgery. So we don't see everyone who has scoliosis. We only see patients whose curve has progressed to the point where it's felt that it's actually necessary. Now, usually that person is in their early teens. They're about to do a lot more growing. Yeah, so we want to hold their curve where it is by using an orthosis and prevent any progression. Okay, so just to orient you, this is the front of the model, but we're gonna look mostly at the back. So this person has a curvature that goes kind of like this, and in order to correct that when they're wearing their brace, we need to apply a pressure like this. So that pressure is going to come both from behind and from the side. So this is a finished spinal orthosis. Uh, this is for a completely different person than the one that I just showed you, but they do have a lot of similarities. Um, it does open in the front like this and you'll see these straps across here. Now we ask people to do it up really pretty tight because it is a corrective style of device. Um, as you can see, it covers pretty much their entire torso and they do need to wear it up to 20 hours a day, sometimes even more. So we do try our very best here to make it as comfortable as it can be because we know they're gonna be wearing it a lot. This has been such an incredible day. It's so exciting to be exposed to a different part of medicine that I'm, I really never get to see. Uh, and so I wanna say a huge thank you to Wendy and to the entire prosthetic and orthotic department. This has been phenomenal. I've learned so much and I can't wait to come back again in the future. So if you wanna see more videos like this when I'm shadowing various allied health professionals, then be sure to check out this playlist because I've got lots more examples. So be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.